Last night, several late night comedians stepped up to slam Joe Biden for being mentally deficient, incapable of running for the presidency and calling on him to step aside. John Stewart went into a long tirade saying they should replace him at the convention. Effectively, that's what he's saying. It seems like the marching orders have gone out. The official narrative now is Biden must go. But Biden says he don't want to go. Now, I wonder this. You know, this morning uh, when I wake up, I have breakfast. I put on Fox and Friends. That's what I put on because, you know, I want to see what is actually happening. I know Steve Bannon says watch MSNBC, but I'm not trying to see in the morning when I wake up the lies from MSNBC. I'm trying to know what's actually happening in this world. Not that I trust Fox News completely, but they're more likely to give us a breakdown. And what I saw was interesting. The Fox and Friends hosts are saying Biden should step down because Fox ain't no different from any of these other outlets. I thought as I saw these segments, has anyone stopped to ask why it is that uh, despite the fact we all knew Joe Biden was deficient now, like finger snap, the entirety of the media has come out against Joe Biden. The other night, a story went viral from The New York Times. A Parkinson's expert met at the White House eight times in eight months. Shocking. Could this be that Joe Biden is suffering Parkinson's disease? Maybe. There's a possibility that because he has exhibited symptoms, they brought in an expert to track this to see if he may be developing Parkinson's. But when you actually read the story, once again, you rip through the garbage and you see something else. This doctor that they've been meeting with, he's a neurologist. He's not a Parkinson's doctor. He's a neurologist. And the White House is denying that he was meeting with the president. The president's just been meeting with his normal physician. Now, we don't know for sure. But the New York Times reports that this guy, this doctor, has actually met at the White House many times, several times at the years for many other presidents. Why then is the New York Times playing this up? Look, my friends, I'm not going to sit here and act like Joe Biden is with it. He certainly ain't. That dude is busted. But my criticism is always the media and understanding how something like this happens. I do not believe that it is likely a coincidence that all of a sudden everyone from Democrat Party leadership to major Democrat aligned media all of a sudden is like Biden's got to go. In John Stewart's rant, he says new information the voters have received new. You called it cheap fakes, not you, John. But the media called it cheap fakes when we pointed out Joe Biden was ailing. Well, look, I'm not saying definitively that there is a coordinated media effort. It is entirely possible, nay probable, that these people just march in lockstep with each other. And when they see something is popular, they try to jump on that bandwagon. That's a possibility, too. But I wonder why all of a sudden at once. This, well, I'll tell you what I think. I think it's actually substantially more likely the reason why they did not call for Joe Biden to be removed earlier in this campaign is because RFK Jr. would have won the Democrat nomination. But they played this game. Biden is the incumbent. Biden will be the nominee. No RFK Jr. And so they had this primary. They ousted RFK Jr. Joe Biden wins. And now that it's functionally too late for RFK Jr. to run as a Democrat. At the last minute, they have this debate where they can play this narrative. No, no, hold on, hold on. Play the narrative, right? They didn't need for Joe Biden to have this debate outside of the Commission on Presidential Debates. They did not need to do it in such a way that benefited Donald Trump. Many people pointed this out. By having no audience, by muting mics, it made Trump look better. He wasn't interrupting. He wasn't cheering or or trying to goad the crowd or anything. He played it straight. And Joe Biden stumbled, fumbled and bumbled. Why would they do all of this? Now, look, don't get me wrong. Occam's razor suggests that in the absence of evidence, the solution that makes the least amount of assumptions tends to be correct. In this case, I would assume these people are just really bad at what they do. And, you know, I don't like to assume, but that's probably the simplest choice to make. They really just fumbled and bumbled. But I got to pause there for a second, because what is true is, yeah, everybody and their mother knew Joe Biden was broken. And we know the media lied about it. 
I can prove it simply by showing you one of my favorite articles of all time. Stay alive, Joe Biden. Democrats need little from the front runner beyond his corporeal presence. This from March of 2020. They knew and they wrote back then that Joe Biden was not all with it. They feared he would die. And they actually published an article in The Atlantic. I say they, these journalists, some of these journalists, in the sense it's a journalist. But don't tell me that the collective media did not understand this. Now they play the narrative that it's new information, a conspiracy. We had no idea Joe Biden was this bad. You knew four years ago before he got elected, he was this bad. So in the absence of evidence, the solution that makes the least amount of assumptions tends to be correct. Well, fortunately for us, we have evidence, evidence to suggest that Democrats and the media knew full well Biden was unwell. And now all of a sudden are acting like they're surprised, which is to say, perhaps the solution here is the least amount of assumptions here would be this is a coordinated effort for some reason we don't yet know why I to keep RFK Jr. out, it would seem. Well, let's do this. Let me play for you this clip from Jon Stewart reacting to what's going on. And wow, you know what I got to say is I like Jon Stewart. I've liked him for a long time. The work he did for 9-11 first responders, I shall commend till the end of my days. I really do mean it, John. Those of you who don't know what he did when he fought for the 9-11 first responders, it is one of the most honorable and dignified things a man can do and outside of what the 9-11 first responders did. But John Stewart using his weight to defend those people, to fight for their funding, heroic. Not as heroic as the actual first responders, but to stand up for them, I tremendously respect. And I will give him that credit. I believe, and as an aside, we should be 9-11 first responders. The $100, $200 billion we give to Ukraine, here's my proposal. We divvy it, divvy it up among the 9-11 first responders who are, who are alive and struggling today. And, and for those that have passed, we give their families a cut. I don't understand, just as an aside, because again, shout out to John Stewart, how we as a society would not just put these men up on the pedestal they deserve to be on and grant them their every desire. I'm not even kidding. The firefighters who ran in that building and the buildings collapsed on them, their families should want for nothing. I, 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 I digress. I just, you know, this one really grinds my gears. And again, I shout out to Jon Stewart. Why can't we just take one mega millions, one mega million? We, don't, we all decide, you know what we're going to do? The lottery ticket winning the 500 million today. We're going to just give that to the 9-11 first responders. How about we do this? How about the next three we give to 9-11 first? We can cover their bills. We can take care of these families. I just wanted to say, I, I, I you know, I get into that because, again, shout out to John Stewart. But let me play. Let's go back to criticizing him and talking about this election. Here's the clip from John Stewart. Let's play it so you can hear it and we'll talk about it. Authoritarianism and Donald Trump aren't the only threats our democracy faces. Our democracy. I got to pause right away. It's just so you understand, when they say our democracy, they are not including you, average American, with concerns about your border, immigration, security, etc. Our democracy, he's not talking about you. You're a fascist to him. Wait till you hear it. An arthritic status quo, unable or unwilling to respond in any way to the concerns of voters who just received new and urgent information about their candidate, also erodes confidence and faith in the system of government. Get on board or shut the f up. New information, he said, about their candidate. Why is that new information? I already showed you that four years ago, they were concerned Biden was going to die. Now there's new information to their voters. It is because they attempted to conceal this to the average person because the average person doesn't pay attention, doesn't watch the news and doesn't know better. That's unfortunate. When people like I or Crowder or Viva Fry or Styx or any of these great personalities who are reading the news attempt to inform the public, they censor, they shadow ban, they silence because they don't want the American people. Now, now hold on. Who are these people? Well, it's it's Democrat interests in large corporations. It is it is YouTube deciding. Let's play more. It's not. It's not.
I think uh, I think John tore that paper. He, he, he just ripped a piece of paper because the last time he was doing a bit, he crumpled it and couldn't rip it. And then people made fun of him for it. So he just grabbed a single sheet and then tore it and then pushed it aside. Weird dude. Honestly, though, get on board or shut the f*** up is not a particularly compelling pro-democracy bumper sticker. <laughs> Nor is, what are you going to do? I've gotten a lot of texts today from folks who watched a lot of West Wing episodes and imagine a very complex path through which uh, we might have a robust primary process. But, Wolf, you know the reality. There's four months left to the presidential election. Four months is for f- ever. <laughs> Britain, Britain just held an election in two months. France had two in one month, defeated fascism, and still had time to have an affair with Denmark. So let's pause real quick and ask uh, this question. What does it mean that France defeated fascism? Well, the single largest party is now Marine Le Pen's party. She won basically every district except for Paris. What does that mean? Defeated fascism. Okay, well, I'm not going to play games. John Stewart views pro-nationalist ideas as fascism. So when he says our democracy, he ain't talking about people who are concerned about illegal immigration, who are concerned about manufacturing. He's saying you're the fascists who must be defeated and our democracy is going to defeat you. He's saying us versus you. Understand that. Are you telling me, you sons of bitches, are you coming to my house and saying to my face that the United States of Bruce Springsteen's America can't hold an election better than a French? Is that what you're telling me? It's four months. Four months. It's 119 days. There are contestants on The Bachelor who haven't even met yet that will get married and divorced between now and the election. We have nothing but time. And by the way, I am in no way saying Biden's got to drop out. But can't we stress test this candidacy? Can't we open up the conversation? Do you understand the opportunity here? Do you have any idea how thirsty Americans are for any hint of inspiration or leadership and a release from this choice of a megalomaniac and a suffocating gerontocracy? It is crushing our spirits. Do you have any idea what could be ahead of you? All we want is for someone to keep it 100, the percentage, not the age. That's all we want. Here's an idea. I'll spitball it. It's last minute. But why don't we try and get all the Democrats together in, I don't know, six weeks' time? Uh, We could get everybody to fly into some Midwestern town, maybe like one adjacent to important swing states. Let's call it Chicago. And they could spend, I don't know, four days there because nobody works Fridays anymore. And on Monday, anybody who wants to gives their sales pitch of how they can make democracy more responsive to the people it is supposed to serve. You could bang it out. On Tuesday, the Winners could move on to the next round and then face Biden. They could face Biden. Biden had a bye. Wednesday would be an off-day bus tour to find the restaurant from the bear. Thursday, the party emerges, energized, unified, sanctified. You could televise the entire proceeding for four days. You could call it, I don't know, The Apprentice. I'm just workshopping here. So... Feel free to ignore any obvious weaknesses in your team's existential fight for freedom and democracy. And then just white knuckle this thing till November. This is the actual descent into fascism. I thought this segment was particularly important to highlight. John Stewart is saying the primary process be damned. An elite group of Democrat politicians should be the ones who ultimately decide who their nominee will be. And perhaps the plan with Joe Biden was not to bar RFK Jr., or because they just found out Joe Biden is ill. Perhaps it was because the entire time they were concerned. Ten years ago, Bernie Sanders stormed the gates. An upset, a grassroots populist campaign nearly upset the established order. Democrats likely said, we can't allow the people to pick because Bernie Sanders using the internet is going to win. So what do they do? Exactly this. Now, Jon Stewart's frantically begging you 
Ignore the primary process. Voters be damned. Democrat elites should be the ones who go into that room for four days and make the choice for you. Really? Well, I can't say I'm surprised. That's what I expect the Democratic Party to be. Now, they make the argument that Donald Trump is a dictator and his party is a cult and all that stuff because that's what they are. It's projection. It's what they do. Donald Trump's far from perfect, but I don't I don't see what they claim to see. And as the meme goes, Lord, give me the Donald Trump that exists in the delusional minds of these leftists, because we certainly don't get that. Trump will hire some bad people, some uniparty establishment shills. He'll give us a moderately good presidency and we'll all roll our eyes when he does bad things. That's the truth. You like Donald Trump? Yeah, I guess. Foreign policy was fairly good. Not perfect. A lot of bad foreign policy. I can't stand these libertarians who are like, oh, yeah, Tim, well, what about when he fired Tomahawk missiles at Syria? And I'm like, yes, that's bad. Next question. You're going to come to me and say that Barack Obama murdering two Americans, and it was more than two, but I, believe, I know for sure, Anwar al-Awlaki and Abdulrahman al-Awlaki. You want to make all the arguments about Anwar? Fine. He was a jihadi. So what? Do we have a constitution that protects American citizens from extrajudicial assassinations? But fine. He was an enemy combatant. Make your arguments in court. Now, Abdulrahman al-Awlaki, the 16-year-old who was not a combatant, you blew him up? Spare me your lies. Now, back to the libertarians who are saying, but Donald Trump, you know, commando raids in Yemen, drone strikes. He increased the drone strikes. He removed the transparency. I'm like, bad, bad, bad. Next question, dude. He set timelines for withdrawal of our troops in the Middle East. He wanted our troops out of Syria. They lied to him and they lied to us. The military did, by the way. They lied to Trump and lied to us to keep troops in Syria. Trump said, I want our troops out of Afghanistan. I'm going to set a deadline. I'm going to meet with the Taliban and we're going to negotiate our retreat. Or I shouldn't say our retreat, but our exodus from this country. Donald Trump worked peace deals in the Middle East and in Europe and in North Korea. So by all means, tell me the bad things. But I say it was marginally better. Slight net positive. Donald Trump is responsible for many bad things. Massive spending. A lot of the, a lot of the deficit he contributed to. All of this is true. And that's my point. Donald Trump will be a marginally good president. He will not be the greatest president ever. He's the greatest president of my lifetime. I told him that. But what does that mean? It means that what does the president do? Well, foreign policy and diplomacy is principal to the presidency. He's the commander in chief of the armed forces. He is the executive of law enforcement at the federal level. Mostly what he can do is executive orders, executive actions pertaining to how law enforcement is handled in the United States, but principally foreign policy. And Donald Trump's foreign policy was net positive. I look at all the past presidents, garbage. War, 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 war that we never asked for, that we never voted on. And Donald Trump, for the first time in my life, says no more. That makes him the best president of my of my lifetime. But he's not going to be the greatest president ever. He may be a really great president and he may be one of the best presidents for a variety of reasons. We'll see. But I really do believe that we're going to get a marginally good second term from Trump. I think everybody who's begging for this Agenda 47 or even the people who think he's going to enact Project 2025, which I'm not even convinced. It's just a Heritage Foundation. Trump's not going to do all that. People say he's going to fire everybody. We hope he fires some people. Now, Joe Biden, I don't know. Right. But this idea that we would basically delete the primaries. It has already been a point of contention in the United States that two private organizations essentially determine who the nominees will be. And if you don't play ball with the Democrats, or the Republicans, you ain't getting in. Going back 10, 20 years, you know, when I'm looking at um, Bush, Gore, all that stuff, I'm, I'm a kid. I don't really, you know, pay too much attention. I'm watching this somewhat marginally. And then Barack Obama comes around. And I believe that was my first election. Uh, you know, actually, yeah, I think that's what I, I didn't. I don't think I voted in, in 04, which I would have been able to for the first time. I think um, Barack Obama was the first. And a lot of promises were made, not kept. But you know what? The problem that I saw back then and I asked about is, so if I want to vote for somebody, they've got to go through the private organization of the DNC or the RNC. That's how it works. They're private. They choose how they want to do things. They exclude third parties, all that jazz. 
They control the machine. One of the big issues we took was the use of superdelegates. When it, when it came to Bernie Sanders, he should have won in 2016, but they iced him out. Superdelegates, political elites who could devote however they want. Primary be damned. The Republicans don't have superdelegates. At least I'm pretty sure they don't. Let's double. I'm, I'm pretty sure the RNC does not have superdelegates the way the Democrats do. Yeah. Yeah. Superdelegates are a Democratic convention thing. Republicans. Uh, let's see. In Republican conventions, three Republican party leaders of each state are automatically seated as delegates, but they are pledged to vote according to the results of their party's primaries. Democrats just have political elites who can be like, no, nah, I don't care. I'm voting for who I want. John Stewart came out and he says, primary be damned. Joe Biden was their choice, but new information emerged. That's a lie. That is a lie. This story was written four years ago, four years and four months. Stay alive, Joe Biden. Democrats need little from the front runner beyond his corporeal presence. It was then it was then you should realize it's a cult. It is a cult. They don't care. It is adhere to the machine, to the hive mind. It's the Borg. Now what John Stewart is saying is, heavens me, we just found this thing out that everyone knew for four years. Therefore, the primary should be nullified. Democrats should hold their own convention and political elites will decide who your nominee will be because you can't be trusted to vote properly. Welcome to the dawn of a new America, my friends. This, the Rubicon's been crossed. And some people have argued that it's the American empire, and like the Roman Empire will collapse. Others have argued, no, in fact, this is the end of the Roman Republic, as we now emerge into the Roman Empire, which will beget 200 years of prosperity. Perhaps it's Trump. Could he be our Caesar-like figure? Whew. I don't know. It's hard to think, right? Maybe the Democrats are playing that game. This is where they've decided democracy be damned. Your primary doesn't matter. We are going to run it the way we want. And I believe John Stewart is predicting what likely will happen. Joe Biden will refuse to bow out. The Democrats will say that instead of arguing, we will have democracy and we will vote at our convention and they'll all clap and cheer as the primary is nullified because the vote of the people doesn't matter. And then they'll say, this is probably how we should do it in the future. We should have the delegates from each state come to the convention, and then we do uh, an open audition. And then never again, never, never again will you get a Bernie Sanders or an RFK Jr. And that's what John Stewart is advocating for. The death of what little semblance of democratic representation left in this country, the death of that. It will be gone. Thanks, John. Wow. I'll wrap it up by saying this. I don't know if the man is just stupid or evil, but fine. My criticisms here, I think, stand. But I will give him credit for his work on the 9-11 uh, first responder stuff. And I will stress this on, on, on my way out for this segment. The 9-11 first responders and their families should basically have an unlimited fund bank account. I don't care. I mean, not literally. You couldn't do what you, do. you know, people might buy stupid things. But I believe they should want for no medical bills. Their homes, should, their house should be covered indefinitely, tax free. Repairs covered when need be. The medical bills covered for all the immediate family members. Vehicle covered. And I'll throw in free airfare. Fly around, see your family and friends. There's a limit, of course. I wish I could just give them infinite money or a billion dollars cash. It's probably not responsible. But I think they deserve everything. And we as a society could give it to them. And we don't. And that's disgusting. So I'll shout out John for that again. I really do mean it. But I'll wrap it up there. Next segment's coming up at 4 p.m. on this channel. Thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you all then.